Dr. Jenna Shivers, and this is Miss Mindy Moo uh, well, from the Lovely Vet. Uh, welcome back. Um, we're here filming from Muskoka, Ontario, which is kind of the heart of Lake Country in Ontario, Canada. Um, we're here to present um, our next series. Um, so uh, our series is based on camping and cottaging safety for your dog. Um, so we're going to start with the first of six. Um, so the first series is going to be based on water safety. Um, we're gonna move on to um, animal encounters, um, then doing um, when you encounter a snake, a venomous snake, um, and then moving on to insects. So ticks, fleas, or sorry, ticks, fleas, I guess are important too. Ticks, mosquitoes, and black flies. Um, and then moving on to um, heat stroke in pets, which is certainly um, not uncommon um, in our hot summer months. Um, and then finally, we're going to be touching on how to put together a pack uh, for your pet. Um, so how to pack for camping or um, cottaging for your pet. So like all of our other videos, we have put in timestamps. So you can uh, zoom through uh, the uh, video today um, with whatever sections you like or go back and check on the ones you want to see. Um, today we're going to be starting with information on boat safety, um, touching on ear infections, uh, talking about swimmer's tail, um, moving on to um, hot spots um, and then finally ending with leptospirosis. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in. So the first section we want to cover is boat safety for your dog. Um, so if it's the first time you're introducing your dog to the boat, um, be uh, conscious that it, it can be a scary place. Um, the boat engine is quite loud, um, the motion of the boat is a little bit unpredictable um, and it can cause some motion sickness in your dog. Um, so um, kind of introduce it slowly, um, use your commands that you have learned on land um, to help you with your, um, with your boat safety. Um, and as always, bring treats with you, use lots of treats as positive reinforcement. Never forget the treats. Doggy life jackets are extremely important when you're boating with your pet. Um, so just like with humans, even if you can swim really well, you should still be uh, wearing a life preserver. Um, because if something happens where you lose consciousness or you fall all overboard, um, that uh, flotation device is going to protect you and it will also protect your pet. So um, you want to make sure the life jacket is, fits appropriately. So I've just put Mindy's Moo's uh, life jacket on here. Um, so you want to make sure um, that it's not too tight, but that it's fairly snug, um, that you have the handles on the top um, and you have the reflectors. Um, and uh, you want to make sure around the neck um, that that's also fairly snug, um, but that you can still fit a hand in and it's pretty comfortable for them. A lot of dogs feel like they're a little bit uncomfortable because they are a little bit restraining. Um, however, um, having them on when the mo boat is in motion is really important. Um, just being aware that this can add insulation to your dog as well. So if it's really hot and humid out, it might be a good idea to leave your dog at home rather than taking them on the boat um, because um, heat stroke could be a, a concern as well. So just being cautious with that. Having a boat ramp um, or boat stairs for your boat makes it a lot easier for your dog to be able to get in and out of the boat. Um, oftentimes boats are not easy to get in and out of even for people. So uh, making sure your dog has that ability to get in and out um, and doesn't panic kind of in the water. You want to be able to use your um, call command, um, come and call command um, to call your dog towards you. Um, and for them to respond in a positive nature to come towards you um, if they are in fact, you know, panicking and circling the boat. Another really important thing is having a, a safe place for your dog on the boat um, that they can feel secure. Um, you want to have a mat that grips to the floor. Um, and if you have mat trained your dog, which is super helpful, you can command them to go to the mat um, and that's their safe place and they're happy to go there um, when the boat is in motion.
And if you're doing longer boat trips where you have your dog there potentially overnight and you're not really docking, um, doing a pee pad training is really important so that the dog knows where they need to go to the bathroom because they will need to go eventually. Um, and also having a cool um, shaded area for them to be able to rest um, when they want to rest rather than just being out in the full sun on deck all day. Listen to your dog's cues. If they really don't like being on the boat, um, it may be a better idea to leave them at home or continue to slowly transition them to the boat in smaller um, amounts rather than kind of just forcing them on board. If they're really anxious, panting, um, yawning, um, certainly try and work with them uh, to, to liking the boat more rather than kind of forcing them to be there. Ear infections are quite common if your dog's swimming in the summertime. I've made a full YouTube video here about uh, ear infections, how to avoid them and how to treat them. So please uh, check that out if you have more questions. Our next topic is swimmer's tail. Um, so for those of you who have dogs who really are avid swimmers in the water, um, if you're just starting out for this uh, beginning of the season um, and the dog's in the water nonstop, you will sometimes see that at the end of their swim day, their dog's tail is limp, really limp um, and they're not able to wag it. And they may even like look around at their back end. They may um, make some um, whining noises when they're trying to rest or when they're trying to go uh, to have a number two. Um, and sometimes what can happen is because they use that tail so much as a rudder while they're swimming, they can actually sprain their tail um, and it becomes very painful for them to move and um, the tail goes limp uh, for a period of time. With swimmer's tail, um, it usually resolves on its own in kind of two to 10 days, um, but some dogs will need some pain control. So um, if you have noticed um, that your dog has been painful, kind of off their food, or um, you can just tell from, from based on their personality um, that they're not themselves, um, and they have the limp tail, definitely go into your vet clinic and get some pain control. Um, and really rest is the, the answer here. Um, resting them for a long period of time until they're fully recovered um, and their tails back happy and wagging again. If your dog suffers from hot spots, definitely check out our video here. Um, it's one of those things with dogs that swim in the summertime, oftentimes they're going to get hot spots at some point. So definitely if your dog's an avid swimmer, checking them over once a day, making sure there's no uh, little kind of gooey spots starting. Um, if you do see them, treat them as soon as possible because they grow like wildfire. Our final topic for today is on leptospirosis. It is a bacterial infection that dogs can get from drinking out of uh, puddles or stagnant water. When animals urinate into the environment and it's trapped into a puddle or um, a, you know, a small pond, um, they can, um, when dogs drink the water, they can get infected with that bacteria. What that bacteria does is it attacks the kidneys and the liver, um, and it can cause your, your animal to be very ill and may even be deadly. The best way to prevent leptospirosis is to number one, get a leptospirosis vaccine. If your dog is the type of dog that goes into the bush, um, goes with wildlife in camping um, or cottaging, um, drinks out of puddles, definitely get your dog vaccinated for leptospirosis. It may not be 100% effective, but it's certainly a lot more protection than not having any vaccines is. The other thing that I would definitely strongly recommend is try to avoid your dog from drinking out of puddles. Um, and the best way to do that is to always provide them a bowl of fresh water everywhere you go. Whether you're on a hike, providing them with a fresh water, you're at the lake, make sure they have fresh water out all the time. Even if you're right next to a lake, a river, um, you know, a pond, give them that fresh water that they need uh, to make sure that they're not uh, drinking water that's been infected. The signs for leptospirosis are your dog becomes quite lethargic, your dog um, doesn't want to eat their food, they start having vomiting, diarrhea, or another big uh, sign is that they drink a lot of water and they're peeing a lot more frequently. Um, these are all signs of leptospirosis. There's certainly other things that can cause those things as well, so don't panic. But I certainly recommend going in to see your veterinarian 
um, to be assessed and get some testing done if they're showing any of those signs. Finally, just for your protection, leptospirosis is also transmissible to humans. So if you're cleaning up your dog's pee accidents, say in the house, you're cleaning it up, make sure you're washing your hands really well. I mean, most people do anyways, but that bacteria can go from your dog's urine to your hand, potentially into your mouth, and you could also suffer from leptospirosis. So just be extra cautious um, when your dog's out and about that that could potentially be the cause of their um, sickness. Having a little folding travel water bowl is an awesome thing to have when you're camping or uh, cottaging or even just hiking out on the trail. We want our dogs to be able to have a drink. These are super flat, easy, convenient. All you have to do is um, undo the plastic um, like a ziplock, open it up, and fill with your clean water for your pump. Thank you so much for tuning in to our first of six series on safe cottaging and camping. Um, thank you. Uh, please like and subscribe. Send this video to your friends if you feel like it would be helpful. Um, if you're looking for daily tips and tricks, please check out our Instagram page at the lovely vet. Um, and we can certainly um, let you know which videos are coming up. Please, as always, leave your comments in the comments below to let me know um, what other videos you would like to see. We want to make sure you can live long, a long, happy life together with your pet. So thanks for tuning in. Take care.